They were looking for a Nevada attorney. I live in Nevada, as you can see by the map. And uh, that, you know, the, he interviewed a few guys and I happened to also have played rugby and Robert loves rugby. And so we hit it off over rugby and uh, 20 years later, we're still going. Garrett, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Michael. Great to be with you too. Yeah, it's been a little while since we when, since we connected. And one of the things I never got to ask you is how is it that you became Rich Dad Advisor to Robert Kiyosaki? What's behind that? Well, they were looking for a Nevada attorney. I live in Nevada, as you can see by the map. And uh, the, you know, the, he interviewed a few guys, and I happened to also have played rugby. And Robert loves rugby. And so we hit it off over rugby. And uh, 20 years later, we're still going. I love that. I love that. Now, you you have another, a new book out called Veil Not Fail. Veil Not Fail. That's got to, what's, what's that all about? I, I can't wait to see what, uh, you always got good stuff, Garrett. What's in that book? It's about piercing the corporate veil. And you set up a corporation or LLC to be protected. You don't want people reaching your personal assets. But when you set up an entity, you have to follow these simple rules uh, called corporate formalities. You have to have meetings. You have to pay the annual fees. If you don't follow these simple rules, the courts will allow someone to go through the corporation and reach your personal assets. And this happens in 50% of all cases. So clearly not enough people are following the corporate formalities. So the book uh, involves real cases. We tell stories to illustrate the principles of how not to do it. And then at the end, we talk about how to do it properly so that your veil keeps you protected. All right. So, so tease the book a little bit. Give us some examples of things that people do, which they probably do. And like, oh, gosh, I might be in trouble. Well, a lot of times someone will get a judgment against the corporation and the, and the uh, person who owns the corporation says, oh, man, I got to get the money out of the corporation real quick before they come after the corporation. That's called the fraudulent transfer. Uh, and so that's not a good thing. The courts kind of get angry when you have a judgment against the corporation, you drain the corporation of all the money so someone can't collect. So we talk a lot about there uh, in the book about fraudulent uh, transfers. There was also an interesting case, Michael, in, in San Francisco in 1995, the Communist Party of the United States tried to take over two private companies uh, by piercing their veils. And the judge in San Francisco said, sure, have at these companies. And the appellate court said, wait a minute, we got to look at this. And so it's kind of an interesting case how the courts will not allow uh, the wrong actors to get into a corporation. Uh, we also have cases involving husbands and wives. You know, that, that gets pretty nasty. And uh, some of these family battles, uh, you know, can get really contentious and uh, just, you know, showing people what they should and shouldn't do to, to stay protected. Well, let's talk about some of those specific things. I mean, the, the real question is, do I need to even listen to the rest of this podcast? Like, you know, this is asset protection for me or is it for a bunch of rich people, right? So so talk, talk about why asset protection might be relevant to a lot of or almost everybody listening to this. Well, at a basic level, asset protection is just like it says, you're protecting your assets from attack and you invest in real estate, you invest in a syndication. And if it's in your individual name and you get in a car wreck and you don't have enough insurance, I always recommend that people have an umbrella policy of insurance to cover that extreme claim. I mean, that's the biggest risk out there is this horrific car wreck. But if you don't have the right level of insurance or even if it, you do have the right level of insurance and in, it's an extreme claim, they can go after the assets that are in your individual name. So you have a duplex in your individual name. The car wreck victim can go right to court and get, the con get control of that duplex. By setting up an LLC, transferring title into the name of the LLC, you have much better protection. Uh, some states like California are weak. Uh, the courts in California say, all right, if, you, know, you have a, a claim against the individual who owns the LLC, we're going to let you go in, barge in, and force a sale of the duplex. Wyoming, on the other hand, Nevada, Delaware, have much stronger laws, and we talk about that in my books, um, you know, uh, Start Your Own Corporation. We go into it a lot in this book, Loopholes of Real Estate, 
Uh, but asset protection is something that everybody who invests in real estate needs to know about. So Garrett, how, how do you think you should structure in our, in our circumstance? So a lot of people listening are syndicators or apartment owners. How should they set it up? What's, what's the best way to, to do that? Well, Garrett, the structure we like is where you, you know, let's say you're investing in a, a number of properties and you have a property in Colorado. So on title is a Colorado LLC. You have a property in South Carolina. So we have a South Carolina LLC on title to the property. Then those two LLCs are owned by one Wyoming LLC. And that's where the real asset protection, the charging order protection comes in. Is you, if you get in that car wreck, it's an outside attack. It's not a tenant suing. They would have a claim against the Colorado LLC, but it's an outside attack. They have to fight through Wyoming and Wyoming offers very good laws. Why is that? I mean, I've, heard that I've heard that before, Wyoming, Nevada, uh, Delaware, these things keep popping up in various different contexts. But what, what is it about Wyoming that really helps and why should there be, I mean, once you get into some scale, you know, either multiple houses or apartment buildings, why does it make sense to roll this up into a Wyoming entity? Well, it's kind of interesting, you know, the American Revolution, we were fighting the uh, British East India Company, a giant corporation. And at the end of the revolution, the state said, look, we want control of our corporate law. We don't ever want to have to deal with a British East India Company again. So most nations have a federal law. The, the law of the land is one corporate law. Here in the U.S., we each, each state has their own corporate law. And that means that states will compete against each other to be the best. And the three that compete against each other the most to be the best are Delaware, Nevada, and Wyoming. And they all offer the charging order protection for LLCs. And that means that if someone is suing from the outside, the car wreck victim, they can't barge in like in California and force a sale of the asset. They have to wait for distributions to be made. They're charged with receiving distributions. And you can control it so that distributions aren't made. Plus, you know, attorneys are on a contingency fee. They get a percentage of what they collect. They're not going to spend time going to Wyoming and hiring a Wyoming attorney to monitor a charging order. You know, they're going to go to the next case that has uh, insurance coverage. So we like having the umbrella coverage of a personal insurance along with the Wyoming or Nevada or Delaware LLC is the holding LLC for all the other state LLCs. That's how we structure things. All right. So that makes a lot of sense. So there's, there's different levels of protection. One is, you know, you shouldn't be a jerk and, you know, act like it's so that people start suing you. Number one, that's kind of avoidance. Number two is you have that insurance protection in case there is a lawsuit. And I think the issue really is, is lawsuits in this country. I mean, I, I, I was sued during the house flipping days and it was completely, it was, it was awful. They sued for like a half million dollars. We ended up selling no lie for like $2,500. That's how ridiculous the lawsuit was. But in the meantime, you have to hire an attorney for for ten thousand dollars and go through all this rigmarole. And and so the 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 danger is, especially when you have multiple entities, multiple houses, or apartment buildings, or in my case, I had restaurants. If there was a lawsuit and one of them and it wasn't structured right, or you're not following some of the formalities to maintain an LLC, they can literally go after your personal assets and your other assets as well, which is which is crazy, uh, crazy to to contemplate. And so. You know, when we're all getting started, we don't think about the downside. I mean, I never did, right? And so I, I just want to make sure that people are thinking through some of these things. And, you know, what are some of the mistakes, Garrett, that you see? Well, either Garrett, really, um, what, what you guys see in people making. I mean, I think that the, the, the biggest mistake everybody knows about is don't hold stuff in your personal name. Okay, I think, I think we got that. Uh, but what about some other mistakes? And and maybe some of the some of the stuff in your in your book is a is a good one. But when you engage with clients and you do an audit, you're like, oh my goodness, there's one, two, three, four. We got to fix these five things, right? You have exposure here. What are right. some of those five things? <laughs> okay, well let's go through them. But I want to mention also, Michael, you mentioned the uh, financial uh, drain on litigation. There's also an emotional drain. Oh, you know, yeah. and, and you are out there doing business and then all of a sudden you're sidetracked by this lawsuit and it, it can really drain you emotionally as well. So we want to avoid litigation at all costs. And, and like you were implying, Michael, you're not a jerk to your, your tenants, 
right? I mean, you're going to keep the property up and you need to have insurance. I mean, that's for the benefit of your tenants too. So, um, you know, that's something. Setting up the LLC for that property is important. What a, a big mistake people make, Michael, is they forget to transfer title mm -hmm. into the name of the LLC. And you, you've set up the LLC, you think you're protected, but someone goes to the courthouse and sees in the recorder's office that title is still in your individual name. You are not protected. So you need to take that a second step of using a grant deed or a warranty deed to transfer title into your name. You're not gonna use a quit claim deed that severs your title insurance. So use a grant deed or a quit claim deed. Um, and then, you know, you need to do the proper filings, tax filings. Uh, if it's a one owner LLC, it's a single member LLC. So you don't have to do a federal return. It flows down to the next level. Um, so it's, it's not that difficult from a tax standpoint. The other mistakes, Michael, are people just forget to follow the formalities. I mean, that's why I wrote Veil Not Fail. You know, there are these simple things you need to do. Um, you need to have a meeting once a year. Now that's required for corporations. Some states don't require it for LLCs, but I don't want you to walk into a courtroom in front of a judge and jury and they say, well, where are your minutes? Where, where, where are your meeting minutes? And you go, well, I don't have to have one. Well, a judge, a good attorney actually is gonna say, well, how do you run an LLC for 12 years without ever having a meeting? You know, and, and they're gonna score points with the jury. So I want you to have those annual meeting minutes. And if you haven't done them, don't worry. I mean, we have a service, you can contact Corporate Direct. We have a service where we'll clean it up for you to make sure that your minutes are up to date. Um, you know, you wanna have a separate bank account for the LLC. A lot of people get into trouble when they set up the LLC, but they don't set up a separate bank account. You have to have a separate LLC bank account, and then you'll pay yourself the profits from the LLC bank account to your personal account. But you don't want to be using your personal account for LLC activity. So, so those are some of the mistakes people make. Yeah, I love that. And and I've used a service before to set up the Wyoming entity, and you kind of have a service where you kind of do this thing every single year because who the heck wants to make these filings and do these minutes? Like I'll never, forget, I'll never, I'll, I'll never, you know, I'll forget those things. And so you, you guys provide a valuable service, not only in setup, but also in maintenance. So I encourage you guys to read Garrett's new book, Veil Not Fail, and make sure that you're following some of the, uh, all of these formalities are really important. If you go through the trouble and, and, and then you, you, for some reason, go to court and you didn't, and you're, you know, they bypass your LLC. What's, what's the point? What's the point of that? Um, right. And, and we offer a free 15 minute consult. If someone wants to contact corporate direct, they can get online with a corporating specialist and see if, you know, see if there's a fit, see if we can help you. Uh, you know, this is not difficult. And contrary to what other promoters say, this is not expensive. This is just another low cost form of insurance. Uh, and, you know, we don't want our spouses to get angry at us for not having insurance. So. <laughs> Just you know, set it, up the entities and then and then follow the formalities every year. What I mean, insur insurance. I mean, you're not an insurance broker, obviously, but what what role do, do you or other asset protection uh, attorneys play with regards to insurance? Is there is there any role you you play, or is there just one of those things that you say, hey, make sure you have insurance? Yeah, uh, that raises a really good point, Michael. So when you transfer title from your name into the name of the LLC, let's say you bought the property in your individual name. And the insurance is in your individual name for that property. When you transfer to the LLC, you've got to let the insurance company know that the title is in the name of the LLC because there have been cases where the insurance companies who have an economic incentive to not cover every claim will say, well, geez, I thought we were insuring Michael personally. I didn't know there was an LLC. And what they'll try to do is charge a higher premium. They'll say, well, the LLC is a business entity. We have to charge you more which is nonsense. The risk of a fire is the same, whether it's titles in an LLC or your individual name. So what you do is you say, okay, leave the premium in my individual name, but list my LLC as an additional insured. And that way you get the lower premium, but you're also insuring your LLC, which is on title to the property. 
So <clears throat> it's a really good point, Garrett. Um, on this kind of topic and this line of thinking, as a business owner and entrepreneur, uh, you know, there's there's definitely other types of insurance like DNO, you know, cyber that exists as other additional layers of protection. And so what have you seen people do in, in regards to that? And, and how is that tied into kind of the types of protection you're talking about? Well, DNO and cyber liability coverage are good for the, the right circumstances. All right. So if you're running a, a property management company, um, you know, you want to have insurance, but I'm not sure you need de- directors and officers insurance. Uh, if you're in a large corporation that has a lot of contracts and a lot of employees, you can get sued as a director and officer. And a lot of times people will insist that if they're going to join the board of directors of a company, uh, like I described, they, you want to have that directors and officers policy, but it's not necessary for the smaller situation. It's not necessary for an LLC that holds a duplex. You don't need DNO insurance there. Now, cyber liability insurance is if you're, you have an internet uh, presence and you're collecting information over the internet, especially credit card information and sensitive information. Uh, if you get hacked and someone gains that information of all your customers, there's a problem there. And you want a cyber liability policy to come in and help uh, you know, deal with the issues and also cover the people who may have lost sensitive information. Um, again, if you own a duplex uh, in an LLC, you don't need a cyber liability policy. Uh, but if you run an active business, especially you're collecting information over the internet, that is definitely something to consider. Well, even with investor data, right? I mean, we we have sensitive social security numbers, days of birth, things of that nature, bank account information, uh, and it's it's important that you that you pay attention to not only the, the insurance part of it, but also just best practices that you're not you know you don't you don't house information yourself using a third party, things of that that nature, are really important. Uh, Garrett, I'm curious, is there anything that's uh, with the law is always changing, tax law and just everything? Is there anything that's been recent that has changed or about to change with regards to asset protection that people probably or should be aware about uh, aware of well there's this uh, bill called the corporate transparency act and uh, there the federal government has determined that money laundering is a huge problem and instead of relying on the irs and the banks to to deal with it which they have in the past they've decided that they need the information on every single corporation and llc in the country they want to know the 25 percent owners of an LLC or corporation. And if you, let's say you own 30%, they wanna have your, uh, your name, your date of birth, your resident address, and a picture of your ID, uh, passport or driver's license. And they want to have this filed every single year. And this is going to be a huge onerous burden for every LLC and corporation owner. We're going to provide a service where we'll charge people to help them file this uh, for the U.S. Treasury. Uh, but I would prefer that this law did not exist. Uh, you know, the, the government has been hacked so many times, and this is going to be a huge attractive target uh, for the hackers to get at this sensitive information. And I don't think it helps combat money laundering. Now, if you don't file the information, uh, the penalty is uh, uh, $10,000 plus it can be two years in prison. So these are some pretty onerous uh, penalties if you don't file. Uh, The final regulations, they were supposed to be out this year. They haven't come out. I think that they will probably come out after the election uh, because this is just another reason for people to be angry at Congress that this burden has been put on us. Yeah. So if you're talking to candidates during the election season, ask them what they think about the Corporate Transparency Act and the requirement that every single LLC owner in the country has to file this report with the federal government. It is going to be a huge burden on everyone. And I just hope the law goes away. Yeah, that's yeah, awful. Now, I mean, you talked about, you know, if you have a duplex, uh, you know, some of these things are less important. Obviously, you want to, you want to follow the, the fundamentals. But as you get a little bit of scale, certainly when you buy an apartment building that costs more than, you know, $50,000, it becomes more and more important. So as people 
uh, start thinking about this, Garrett, what what should, and, and they're interviewing asset protection attorneys, what should they be looking for? Well, I think you want someone who has invested in real estate themselves. You know, I, I think, you know, if they've been through the same wars, I think that helps a lot. Um, and so, you know, I, I started investing in real estate in my 40s. I wish I'd started earlier. Um, but, you know, someone who has invested in real estate and has had to evict a tenant and, and you know, just been through the wars, I think is good. Um, I think you want someone who uh, can appreciate the difference between Wyoming law and California law. You know, I mean, uh, they, they are very different laws. And if someone who said, tells you that California law is offers great asset protection, um, I would consider interviewing another attorney because that's not the case. So uh, along these lines, so why are people, we talked a lot about like LLCs, but there's other types of companies that you can form. Why are LLCs the most advantageous or are, maybe they're not? At, and what other strategies out there exist using uh, different types of corporations and companies? Well, LLCs are the most popular, Garrett, uh, because in part because, I mean, they, all, they offer really good asset protection, especially in Nevada, Wyoming, and Delaware. Um, corporate shares are not protected like LLC uh, membership interests are. They, the, the only state that offers protection, charging order protection for corporate shares is Nevada. So when you set up a corporation in Colorado, you don't have the charging order protection that you do with an LLC. Secondly, the LLC can be taxed however you want. It can be taxed as a C corp, as an S corp, as a partnership or a disregarded entity where everything flows onto your personal return. So there's a lot of flexibility with regard to taxation uh, with the LLC. Um, and as well, with a corporation, you have two sets of management. You've got the board of directors, and then you have the, off, uh, the officers of the company, and they, they each have to have their own meetings. With the LLC, you only have one level of management, either the, the managers or the member managers. And so it's easier from a, a corporate management standpoint to use the LLC. So there are a lot of advantages with LLCs. You can set up limited partnerships. There's some cases where the limited partnership makes sense, but we're setting up probably 95% of all entities are LLCs now. Yeah, so uh, Garrett, you've written a bunch of really cool books that I recommend you guys um, um, check out. They're all written on the Rich Dad series, Start Your Own Corporation, Run Your Own Corporation, and then the last one is uh, Veil Not Fail. So definitely think you guys should uh, should look into that. If people want to connect with you, find out more about what you guys do at Corporate Direct, how can people connect with you? Well, the best place, Michael, is with CorporateDirect.com, and you can schedule a free 15-minute consult uh, at that website. Uh, people can always call 800-600-1760 if they want. Uh, but that's, that's the best place. We have a lot of uh, articles there. Uh, we, you know, we keep people updated on what's happening in uh, the field of asset protection because things do change in this field. Um, so we do try and keep our clients all updated. We have a free newsletter you can subscribe to. But Corporate Direct is the best place to go. Awesome. Garrett, I think this is a super important topic, asset protection, because why spend years building up generational wealth when you can very quickly lose it, lose it with a single lawsuit? So it's a very important thing that you guys not just need to think about, but actually act on. So go ahead and schedule a call with, uh, with Garrett when you get a chance. Garrett, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Garrett. Good to be with you guys.